motors or rebuilt motors. Really nice to meet you and everything. There. Absolutely. I better, I better grab this phone line. But. Here at Commercial Hydraulics, this is Tom, or the Joe, I'm sorry. Yeah. Joe rebuilt my uh, my hydraulic motors and put some new bearings in for me here. So <laughs> it's time to get back to the shop and get to work. Commercial Hydraulics is awesome. So here's uh, everything ready to go. We have uh, two motors rebuilt, two wheels, new bearings put in. And it's time to get them back to the shop and get them installed. It's a really cool place. They've been around for a really long time. Commercial Hydraulics is, seems to be some really great people over here. It's my first time dealing with them, but I would highly suggest letting them help you out with any of your hydraulic building needs. We'll see how it goes getting them installed. All right, welcome back to Roscoe Garage and more. I got them back, finally. We painted up. The motors have been rebuilt wanted to get them good and clean and painted so that they would uh, hopefully not rust or deteriorate as fast so we got those I'm in the midst of that we've got their uh, here's the old parts and the new parts all busted up on the right and the brand new tensioner arm on the left so they look a lot nicer they're gonna operate a lot better too there's the old tracks I got my weights painted up and here's the before this is a good one so that's what it looks like before because I'm getting ready to spray this side. I haven't sprayed it yet. That's the before. Then after I get done, it's going to look beautiful like this. I mean, just shiny and looking like a brand new machine. So that's the next plan. I did go ahead and pick up a uh, new hour meter and a new fuel gauge. So I'll be installing those later. I'm going to do a separate video on that. But oh, I'm so excited to finally get this thing out of my shop. I'm ready. Just wait for paint to dry. She'll be back together in no time. All right, so ran into something that I never thought about, and that was orientation of the uh, motors, the hydraulic drive motors. So if you look at the back of the motor right here, you've got A and B, and I was like, if I put it on wrong, it's going to go backwards when I could try to go forwards. So, what I did was, because there's absolutely no information whatsoever on this, um, on your hydraulic pumps, they're labeled A and B up in here. And I've had to rub it off a little bit. I'll light it up. This is A right here and a B right here. So, it tells me if I follow this all the way down, I've labeled it bottom and top, but I didn't label it A and B. So, we know that B for bottom, that motor, when it goes in and it turns, is going to be B on the bottom. So this should be the right side drive motor. So I'm going to slip it in there, and then we'll cut video and start putting it together. Back to the Roscoe garage. The only way these go in, come down here real close, I want to show you. The only way these go in is this square part right here has to come up and match with this square part right here. And then they slide directly in and then rotate. And then we're going to have to put the uh, mounting hardware behind it. It's a split piece. So once we get that mounting hardware behind it, the bolts will go through that, through the pump, or the motor, through this plate, and then into another plate. And that's what pinches everything together really tight. So let's slide it in there. Oh, I've been waiting for two weeks to do this. I hope it works really good. All right. So now that's in, and we're going to rotate the motor to where that, where the holes point straight back. Which sounds really easy, but it's not, of course. <laughs> oh. All right, so you have to pull the motor out and then rotate it and then slide it back in. We're learning as we go here. Everybody's learning as we go. <laughs> we're gonna make it and we're gonna put it together. It's gonna be awesome. So my next process is gonna be putting my two fittings in, replaced all the O-rings. And you wanna make sure that you clean all these. I used air and I blasted them all off as best I could. But your most important one is this face right here. Back up a little bit. 
because if that has any debris on it whatsoever see that little chunk right there that's going to cause it to leak so this all has to be really clean otherwise you're going to be taking it apart and trying to reseal it and that's the last thing we want to do so we'll be back soon i want to get these fittings in and then we'll come back and hook these lines up hopefully b on bottom is the right way i'm pretty sure it is okay, so you come in real tight right here these are the o-rings that you replace so if it makes sense to you this is flat and the o-ring just barely humps up out of there and that's going to be the part that mounts up to the hose because the other side has an o-ring right here and that is going to sit right into this groove right here and that's what's going to seal that and make it all nice and tight so you want to make sure all this is nice and clean and debris free they were nice enough to put these little blue caps in there for me so i kept all that clean when i installed it so we're going to spin these suckers in and i don't know how tight to tighten them but i know they took two breaker bars to get off so i'm going to put them in there pretty tight see you soon all right here are your mounting plates and it's split in half and you want to put the thicker side goes on top the thinner side goes on the bottom and so this one's going to go around the back side and then this one's going to come around the front side and they'll meet together around that pump or that motor and then we'll put the bolts through everything and they'll screw right into here so i'm going to go ahead and put this back side on show you what a pain in the butt it's going to be because i know it's not going to be easy it's never easy nothing's ever easy why can't it be easy all right so there's got to be a trick to this i'm sure it's a puzzle so i'm going to put it flat back in there and then drop it and slide it across all the way across until it's flush up against the other side the inside of the housing and then this one big side to the top is going to go in and it's going to take some wiggling too so kind of thought the front one was going to be easy but of course not Bound and determined to get hydraulic fluid up to my elbows today. Mm -hmm. All right. So this one's sure, I'm sure it's got a trick too. So I'm gonna put it in flat like this, tilt that motor down and then roll it in. I think that might be the ticket. Maybe, maybe not. Nope, that's it. Just gotta work the motor around. So that's what it's gonna look like. We're gonna drive some bolts through there, get that back one nice and flush, and then we'll be back to uh, start hooking some lines up on this thing. Three quarter inch bolts that hold the motor on. What you do is you put those back plates on there, and then you gotta stick your arm all the way through from the other side to get that back one to go flush. Then you use a screwdriver, a small screwdriver through there, and you got one arm inside and that screwdriver on that side, and you get those holes to line up. And that way, because I had it, it was kind of off kilter and it wasn't going to go. So we got them all lined up. Now we're just snugging them up. I'm doing a little bit at a time. You don't want to tighten one bolt all the way. Get everything in and then start tightening. And of course, when you move this wheel, you squirt hydraulic fluid. So welcome to the mess. So I'm going to put a pretty good amount of torque on these because this is really important. But you don't want to over tighten anything. This needs to be good and tight. We'll be right back. All right, so we're just going to clean up these one more time with a clean paper towel or clean rag. Make sure all of our surfaces are spotless. I've already cleaned these two up in here. <clears throat> and this is where I labeled them top and bottom. So this one should go right here on the top. And this one should go right here on the bottom. You can see what's going on there. But I'm just going to work them <clears throat> one at a time and... Uh, Actually, you have to put the bottom one on first because otherwise that top hose gets in the way and you won't be able to get to anything. So, bottom one first. You got my trusty adjustable because I don't have tools big enough to turn these things. I don't have any wrenches big enough to turn these. So, that's the way I got them off. That's the way they're going back on. I'll be right back. Yeah, a little final cleanup. Final cleanup. Make sure your O-rings are in place. on there make sure you do the bottom one first because there's no way you can get to the bottom one if you put the top one on first be extra careful not to cross thread take your time hand spinning as long as you can before you get your wrench in there because there's no 
room in here. So, it's tight, to say the least. I just take my wrench and my adjustable and just flip it back and forth. So I turn it as far as I can that way and then flip it over, grab it, turn it as far as I can, flip it over, grab it, and you know, repeat. It's what happens when you don't have all the tools you need, but do you ever have all the tools you need in all reality? That's why a snap-on make, man makes so much money. Because <laughs> you can never have too many tools. But this is really pretty easy stuff. If you just have a pretty basic set of tools, you'll have no problem at all getting these uninstalled and reinstalled. And fix your machine without paying somebody a small fortune. <clears throat> I'm trying not to over tighten, but I got them good and snug. So. We're going to hope those don't leak, and the last thing you want to do is try to dry up all that fluid around it because you want to be able to see if you have any leaks because we're not going to put everything together until we test this. So, you dry it up real good. We're going to move on to the other side, get all this stuff connected, get the battery in, fired up, and then it's going to be test time! See you back soon. Hey, boo. Out here on a garbage bag and a pallet. This is the Roscoe paint booth. <laughs> It works though. You got to work with what you got going on. All right. So, back side of that motor. We're going to be on this side of the machine. So, A and B. Oh, maybe B's not bottom. I don't know. I guess it flips on the other side. But that's good that I looked at it and figured it out. We're yeah. good. Get it in there. Why it's got to be so heavy? Remember, lift with your legs, not with your back. Oh, my back. <laughs> right. You would definitely want to turn that before you get it all the way in there, because otherwise it won't turn. And don't pinch your fingers. There's plenty of pinch points on these. Plenty of pinch points. The paint's still a little wet. With Roscoe Garage and more. So I've got the pumps installed. Fuel tank is installed, battery's installed, we did a little test, and uh, the motors do turn the correct way and everything. For some reason, on the left side, the A and B were swapped, but I just put it back together the way I marked it. Oh, and if you like, a little race car uh, fuel filter there, pretty awesome. All new fuel line. But the next step is to get this back plate on right here. Uh, put the battery hold on on there. Tighten the battery up and then put that backing plate on and then the weights <clears throat> and then we're gonna put tracks on it. So stay tuned, it's coming. It's gonna roll today. Alright, so tensioner, new tensioner wheel, new bearings. This is how it goes in. You got the adjuster that goes first all the way to the back. I'll go ahead and pull it all out. And it's easiest to put your spring in first. So the spring slides down into the housing, and then your adjuster slides in, goes in those grooves, and there's your half inch drive that you use to tighten everything up and get the tracks tight. And then all that slides together into the tensioner housing. Ta-da, now we're gonna put tracks on. Oh, it looks so nice, look at it! It looks so cool! Can't wait to drive it. We'll drive it soon. All fresh paint. We got the backing plate on, or whatever you call that thing. Big heavy piece with four bolts. And this side's already put together. So, next step is we're going to start it up and try to use power of the motor to put the tracks on. Uh, yeah, wait, wait just a second. All right, put the tracks on. Put the tracks on. You got your tensioner arm in and everything. I think they say to leave this wheel off. We're going to try to do it with the wheel on. But you always go to your drive side first and get your cogs tucked in there before you do anything else. And we're going to try to use the power of the machine to get this thing to track on. So, Jeff's going to start it up for me. We got it kind of started here. 
we're going to start it up and start slowly rolling forward and I'm going to kick it while we're doing it. So we'll see how it happens. See if it works. <laughs> Fired up.